well. How are you? I'm good, thank you. My goodness, you look fabulous. I am dressed up for this Closet Confessions because it's something we haven't been to yet. Oh, is it jewellery? It's going to be necklaces, jewellery. It's going to be how to accessorise, how to make a boring dress you're going to get rid of, suddenly come back to life. I'm very excited. But can we see what you're wearing? Because last week I gave you a challenge for the print clash. <laughs> the only thing that links these two items is that they're both from Zara. So I've got on a body skirt and um, this blue top with a pattern on it. The colour is so good on you. Are you. What are you wearing on your lip? It's and Sasha. Oh, very nice, because you've picked out exactly the colour in the shirt. Lucy, looking good. On one hand, there are some classic rules, but on the other hand, they can contradict to each other quite often. So this did take a long time to organise, Lucy, but I felt that I wasn't wearing my accessories that much because I couldn't see them. So I think a big thing is, you know, I always invest in, in storage. And for jewellery, I think it's really important if you can have clear storage. I thought I'd start off with how I store my things. These are all Muji and they are different sizes. So I have some very big earrings, like this will be a great earring for you to wear today. And they need to go in a deep box. Those are from Liat Ginsberg. If you can see, there's a slight color theme. So I've got sort of gold earrings together. I built this collection up, Lucy, for many many years i do like to know that they're done by colors because then it's really easy to find them and i think there's certain essentials i'm going to go through but there's gold there's colored there's hurley inspired ones multi-colored ones like that can you, do you wear gold or silver jewelry you know what lucy i'm neutral so i can sort of wear both i don't have very warm hair or very warm, warm eyes, but I don't have very cool hair or very cool eyes either. My skin tone is kind of neutral. I'm like a rosy olive, so I can wear both. If you're very olive, you might wear gold. And if you're very cool brown, you might suit silver. So you've got to kind of play with it. I think most women know because like, you know, there's certain precious things they wear and they always wear them generally in the color they suit the most. Here, I've got my really big necklaces and these all have a history. It was my choker that I wore on my wedding day. And that was from Ericsson Beeman. Wow. It's really sweet. And Lila wore it last Christmas, actually. Then I have sort of mad things. It's really good to have a few necklaces that are very transformative. This is a Stella McCartney one. And it's just fab. I feel very Iris Apfel. The delicacy of jewelry is not about your size, but it's about your sort of wrists. And like, I've got footballers' hands. I need big jewelry. Delicate jewelry is lost on me. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. Okay. I get these little nails and I put them on the inside of my door. And things that will really tangle easily, I hang long. So where have you collected all of this from? I mean, this is an old Bottega Veneta necklace that is a belt, because it's meant to be like this, but I wear it long ways. This is a really pretty little aquamarine, yes, that I got in India. This I love, it's so little, but this yellow, it's like a Missoni yellow that goes with other necklaces and I do it in a layering piece. Marnie I used to collect a lot of necklaces from, that's an old Marnie. Then I went through a stage where I loved Venetian moments. I was sort of in Venice and I got these beautiful necklaces and I've got lots of them in different colours. What's the rule with how you, you style that with your clothing? Well should we just do some styling now? Because I've got yeah. a whole set of outfits with some styling tips. Just tell me about those earrings you've got on there. Are they little sequin? These are little sequin earrings. They were cheap as chips. I stole them from the This Morning Fashion Cupboard. <laughs> they were probably like £15. They have a ton of earrings we used to style up, and I just thought, oh, they're really sweet. Is that a hair up earring? I think I felt the outfit was so much that my hair would be too much. Let's start with this, okay? Which my lovely partner said to me, Trini, why are you wearing your nighty? <laughs> he has a good point. But it is that, I mean, for now, a fabulous run-around dress. But I might want to attend a dinner party of some sort. So I'm going to show you what I do to change it totally. Whoa. <laughs> this is where I talk about breaking the rules because traditionally I wouldn't do a necklace and a belt. I would do earrings and a belt. I break that rule when the colors are similar. Mint green is not my color, but turquoise is. And sometimes what a necklace can do is it can bring that slightly off color back into your life. This is my mother's from Ken Lane in Beach and Place in 1960. This is from Venice on my honeymoon. 
This is um, a whole set of turquoises from Nevada when I went to stay with some friends for their birthday. You brought it all together? Yeah. So this is another example of a dress that could appear shapeless. Where's this from? This is from Zara and Chloe and I did it for Friday Twinning a while ago. It's sort of softer than a burgundy. When I look at this, I think, all right, do I do a necklace or do I do a belt and earrings? I'm choosing a belt which is a texture, not a metal. And I like that for the look I want to create because I don't want matching metal and metal. So I've got that belt there, which I think also makes the dress, takes it out of the chiffon. And if I put sort of gold there, it would still, it might feel a bit old lady. Yeah, okay. And then um, you might remember this trick, but whenever you wear a belt, if you echo in the earrings, the buckle, it just brings the whole outfit together. And it's just having that little roundness and then that little roundness. It's quite a similar shape to the previous dress, but with a whole different look. Whole different look. I remember you saying something in the past about uh, face shapes and round earrings. Yeah. What was the connection between the two? I've got quite a long neck. I'm better off in an earring that slightly goes out and fills this area up because there's a lot of it. And when you are somebody with a shorter neck, you can wear in a way a more delicate earring and you can see the focus on the earring. I want to talk about the joy of a white earring. It's something I only discovered from a lovely woman a few years ago um, who used to sell me vintage clothes. She said, every woman has to have a pair of white earrings. And until I bought those off her, I didn't realize how important it was. It's super chic. But you know, you, you really notice it. I don't think many people would think to go that bold with a dress that has so much texture. I did try these earrings with a white broderie anglaise shirt and it had a tiny frill and it killed it. You need enough expanse between a clean round neck or a v-neck and, and where the earring is. If they start to go on top of each other like that, then it doesn't work. Do you forage for jewellery when you're travelling? I did, because you can see I built up quite a big collection. But I think now it's rare I buy jewellery because I kind of have it. I love orange, but sometimes a whole orange is slightly too much for me. It's about thinking what are the good clashing colours that work. But I could do that. Yeah. And it just makes it chic and it brings a bit of the blue. So it's looking on that sort of colour wheel and thinking orange and this blue does look good together. So what could I yeah. bring in as a necklace to make make this work for me if I wasn't going to just then put a whole load of makeup on. I quite like all the attention up here. Yeah, you're keeping that blue next to your face. Yeah, exactly. Very nice. Do you think that um, necklaces are going to have a bit of a moment with all the face timing that we're doing? I really hope they do. I mean, I think that earrings should too, because they're very easy. And I think one can have really good fun with earrings. So, um, you know, if one's doing a day to night look, Let's say you're at a business meeting all day on video conferencing and then you haven't got time to change before your house party moment. What can you do? So this is that kind of 80s but a bit of Parisian chic. Ooh. You know, just hair up, a nice lip and an earring. It's a classic, but I think the trick with this to me is I love a higher neckline. There's something I really like about the monochromatic black and white with the black and white and the lip. There's something about that jacket that just feels sharp. And I think a necklace would ruin the soft folds of the fabric. So yeah. for me, it's an earring moment. That's such a cool earring. I haven't worn this earring before, actually. I think, again, it was the cheapest chips this morning number, but it goes really well with the jacket. If you start to introduce a color, it can then fight with the color of your lip. So this is just a little bit of Valentina. How do you feel about pearls in general? It depends a lot on how you're wearing it, Lucy. But I think pearl earrings are incredibly beautiful. They can just feel classic. Did your mother wear pearls? Not really, my grandmother wore pearls. My mother wore interesting rings. She had a lot of jewelry when she was younger. My dad and her went through a difficult patch, so she sold her jewelry to help uh, fund them when, when, you know, when times were tough. So there were a few things I got from my grandmother. I got things from my godmother more than anybody else. And I think the lovely thing about jewelry is you can have that emotional relationship with somebody that used to be in your life. And you, 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 whenever you wear that jewelry, you remember them. So I have two or three pieces like that. One of them is this ring from my godmother, 
and it's just um, I think it's a moonstone oh wow and I used to wear it a lot and I don't wear it so much anymore but I loved it and it was just my first big ring this is a piece of jewelry that my mum I remember first thinking oh my god that's such a big necklace when I was little and I was mesmerized by this necklace and it probably excited me more than her precious little ring or something you know because it was so playful and now it's just like in my necklace haul it's quite small but yeah. it has a very sentimental memory and I will try and wear it actually with something because it's kind of a cool necklace and I think that it's probably Ken Lane because my mother bought a lot of Ken Lane which was a jeweler in the 60s and 70s in Beecham Place in London he did amazing costume jewelry it might be you have a very boring outfit on and sometimes a long necklace can just change it. So this is one of my favorite necklaces. It's called my fried eggs, but I just love it. There's something fun. I'd normally do it with a t-shirt, Lucy. That's cool. So think about how you want to show people your character by the necklaces you choose. Allow it to be an extension of your personality. Is there ever a day when you don't wear jewelry? I don't wear jewelry much when I wear shirt collars. The only way it would work is if you had something in the center. If the collar is a little bit high, I feel it will fight with an earring. But what I will do is I'll wear a little ring. So this, Lucy, is just about a plain black dress, like everyone has a plain black dress in their wardrobe. And it's what you can do to change it up. So this is a Zara one, it's this season. I'm just gonna put a really old necklace on that I bought years ago. But it's what I call a collar necklace. Ah, oh, okay. And it just changes the shape. So this gives the dress more of an hourglass shape because I've created this V in the collar. Another collar necklace I love is this one from Miu Miu. And I just oh, cool. loved the way it was a collar. And I do that sometimes in the evening. Very nice. So you've just made it more date, more evening look, the whole dress. Yeah. Rada years ago did these kind of architectural necklaces. Some people look fabulous with floral inspired jewellery, but I also always have liked abstract inspired jewellery. Yeah, a different dress. It could, it's, I mean, it could be a part of the dress. You know, you might pick these up on somewhere like Vestiaire Collective. They have a place I won't wear them for seven, ten years, and then they'll find a place again. So I think never get rid of jewellery. It's something I hoard more than anything. Have you ever gotten rid of anything? Yes, I have. I'll show you now the two necklaces I wear the most. I do feel every woman should invest in a white necklace because when I go on holiday, I take this with me more than anything else. I love this necklace. It's a really old Ericsson Beeman. Length of necklaces, I think, have a lot to do with the length of your waist. So because I have a very long waist, I love a necklace that comes to my belly button. So if you're short-waisted, you might want to have things that are there. What about if you have big boobs? If you have big boobs, then you've got to have a narrowness of necklace that's going to not interfere. So another favorite, any one of these if you've got big boobs, because then it just nestles in between your breasts or if you have a long thing and then you can have a big pendant at the end. But if you have something very thick here, sometimes it's like on a tray and you want it to nestle in between. So these are probably the necklaces I wear the most, Lucy, but I'd never wear them singularly. Like if I wore that by itself, it wouldn't suit me. It's sort of too delicate for you. Yeah, it is. So <laughs> this is old um, Saint Laurent vintage. Yeah. And this one is an old uh, fishbowl, which I got from a fan in, I bought it off her in Scandinavia when I was doing a show in Norway or Sweden. And this is an Anina Vogel necklace. Um, which my best friend gave me, and um, I wear these all the most. And also, you know, I play with them. There's, there's something, you know, when I'm feeling a bit like, Ooh, hello, and I just can play. And we can hear you coming in the office. You can, jingle, jingle, jangle. I hope I've given you a little insight, Lucy, because it's, um, you know, I could do this for hours, uh, and there's so much to talk about with accessorizing, and it's just a soupçon of considering if you don't do it often, what you can do to change up what is in your wardrobe already. So if you're thinking, I don't want to buy any clothes this year, you know, what necklaces or jewelry can you put on to change something? Or, you know, can you take a few rings you don't wear and put them at the end of the necklace to make it a heavy pendant? You know, we could do in this time a lot of playing with our jewelry and switching it up to be something else. 